Good morning. Um, hi, my name is Rebecca. I am an interior designer in Billings, Montana, and welcome to my stream. Welcome to my channel. So today I am working on revising a plan in Chief Architect. Uh, that's the software that I use. Um, currently I'm using Chief uh, version X14. Um, so I'm working on this plan. I've already got the majority of it put in and I'm just making a few minor edits before I send this back to the client so that the builder can start putting numbers to it. Um, so we found out that just due to the depth of the lot and some setback requirements, we have to shave two feet off of the depth of this plan. So instead of 34 feet, we have to shrink it to 32 feet. Um, so that's gonna be the first thing that I do. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. So uh, watch well I work on this plan. Um, this is uh, going to be built kind of over East Coast, uh, Pennsylvania area, so it's a little different style than a lot of the stuff that I get to do here in Montana. For whatever reason, there's not a lot of multi-level homes here in Montana. We like our one-level, single-level living, but space is at a premium on the East Coast, and so they like to build up, not out. So we do have a second floor up here, and of course the master bedroom and all the other bedrooms are upstairs. The main floor is basically just the public areas. We've got a garage, and then family, kitchen, living, dining, all that. So um, pretty straightforward plan, but just not a style that I get to do as often out here in Montana. So as I said, we're going to be shaving two feet off of the plan. Um, and basically, the majority of it's going to be coming right up off of the front here. Now, anytime I do something like this, the roof line is always the part that drives me nuts when I have to edit it. But fortunately, this roof line is pretty straightforward. So other than basically dragging that gable wall back and the shed roof back two feet. There shouldn't be too many issues with that. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving my walls. Um, but first I'm going to have to change this sectional. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that for now. We'll put a different one in once we have the space figured out. Um, and I'm going to, I had some built-ins here, so I'm just going to kind of delete those until I can get the spacing back the way that I want. So I'm taking two feet off the front of this house. Um, I'm going to want to shift this built-in and the window at least one foot. So there we go. Um, and we'll move this furniture. Okay, so we'll just scoot that out of the way. Um, Really quick, I'm going to delete this because I don't need that anymore. But that was a faux beam situation in the ceiling, but the client really doesn't want the exposed post and beam, if at all possible. So I'm going to delete these two that were decorative. I'm leaving just this one post right here until we can confirm with an engineer that that's not needed. So I'm going to leave that alone. And then we're going to go ahead and shift a couple of these things back two feet. So I'm going to grab the front wall of the house, the front railing, these posts and this set of stairs. So there we go. So we've moved our front wall back two feet. Now this auto foundation thing popped up because the foundation hasn't moved back. So we're going to move this over. Um, now it is possible to click and type in your dimensions, but when it's only one or two feet like that, I just do the arrow keys because I can very quickly, just one inch per click, move that over. Um, move my label to where it's visible. So now that does mean that this front porch is only three feet deep. So it's really more just for the looks and the aesthetics on the outside. There's really not really space for much except for maybe like a little bench. Um, definitely not space for like a rocking chair. You get pretty crowded, but it still keeps the front of the house looking good. So that's the basement, the foundation, and the main floor that we've just updated. Now I go up to the second floor. And again, we're going to take this and that window. Move that back two feet. But for whatever reason, that is not lining up. Why is that not lining up? I might have hit an extra button. So double check our exterior dimensions. So this needs to be 32 feet even. So that is correct. And then if we go upstairs, same thing, 32 feet even. So, and I'm not quite sure why this is offsetting. But we'll 
manually adjust that, which then means that that auto-generated wall, perfect. Okay, so that shrunk this upstairs office room to 10 foot, which this was kind of a bonus space anyway, so that's not going to be too big of a deal. Now, because we pushed all that back, before we go and edit the roof, we're actually going to widen the house by two feet on this dining room, family room end. And so that will help to make up for some of that space we lost up front. I'm just gonna move my dimension line out of the way. And I'm gonna grab that, that, and my little built-in here, okay. And we're scooching that over. So we should end up with a total of 53 foot for the width, which we do. So we have the fireplace and the built-ins here. And they're not exactly centered on that wall. We'll need to move this window over a little bit. And we'll decide how we want to make that look. Um, but that's going to impact the furniture layout. Because instead of the room being kind of wide this way, now we've stretched it a little bit. So we'll have to find a new shape of sectional or sofa or, you know, whatever different layout to make this work. I think probably what I'll end up doing is flipping these chairs around and putting them over here somewhere. And then doing a sectional that kind of more wraps this way. So I might rotate this coffee table. And then I'll look in my library to find a nice sectional that fits this layout. Mm -hmm. Let's do the bigger one. There we go. Doesn't want to overlap with that coffee table, so I'll move that off to the side for now. Okay. And Chief is picky about overlapping things, but you can kind of fake it by, there we go, dragging and dropping like that. So, and then I'm going to move the room label where it's a little more easily read. Normally you'd want the room label to be kind of in the middle of the space, but when you're kind of messing with furniture, you don't want to make it confusing and hard to read. So we added two feet to the width, so we're going to take this dining room set and we're going to scooch this over a little bit. Um, and this is an interesting place because, so we shrunk this, we shrunk the family room, but there's really not much we can shrink back here. So we have kind of this weird space at the back of the dining room. I might suggest that they do like a little window bench along the back. And then that way they have some flexibility like for holidays or um, they can put in a larger table if they want or just having a nice window bench as a space for the kids to hang out. Because there's really not a lot I can do to shrink this um, to give that family room more space. Because you don't want to shrink the walkway in front of the fridge. You don't want to, you know, the powder room can only shrink so much. Um, although I think we, no, we didn't have even have space there because if you have the closet at the right depth, then you got to have the door. And so it's just one of those things where every little thing is kind of hinged on every other little thing. You just really got to be paying attention to your clearances and how one thing impacts the others. However, although we can't move some of these things and this post, like I said, we're waiting, we need to have an engineer just double check and see if that one post can come out. Because we have some flexibility over here with not having a defined wall between the family room and the dining room, we could, in fact, shift this dining room table back just a little ways, even if we suggest, say, a window bench along here and shift this door back, say, a foot. So let's do like that five foot. That allows us to move our window back a ways and shift the spacing of this fireplace to bring it um, so this doesn't become just kind of a dead hallway here. We actually kind of scooch this back like that and 
maybe scoops this up a little bit too. So that will help for that family room not to feel so small and not to feel like there's this dead space over here at the back. So that feels a lot nicer. I am going to actually draw in real quick my thoughts over here. Um, so I'm using the 3D Polyline Solid Tool. Benches should be 18 inches tall. Change my material so it's not concrete. And I'm just making it bright white to match the trim. And then I'll make a quick little note. Question mark. Okay. So what that ends up looking like in 3D, we stand back over here in the family room. Voila. So you can see there's this nice little window bench there. Um, I don't like how that quite hits the end of the cabinet, so let's actually make that a little shallower. Um, kitchen cabinets are typically 24 inches deep. Uh, benches like this are best when they're about 20 to 22 inches deep. So if we do that, there, that resets it back just a little ways. Um, and I'm also going to, I didn't really put a lot of time into this kitchen, um, but before I send it over to the client, I am going to really quick change this because that door doesn't look right when it's flipped to the right. Um, so there, by flipping it that way, now it looks like it's more part of the kitchen instead of hanging off into nowhere. But one thing I really like about this kitchen layout is that the fridge is sort of behind this corner here. So as you're coming in the front door of the house over here, yes, you see the kitchen, but really all you see is the island and that kitchen sink over there. And it's not until you're actually in the kitchen space that you see the stove, the microwave, and the fridge. And then you've got this little pantry tucked back there as well. So it's a really great way to have the kitchen be part of the space without it being obnoxiously kitchen-like. So there's that. Um, and again, this one post may or may not end up being there in the final. It just depends on the engineer. And I think they were talking about the 32-foot floor joists supporting that. But just in case, we're leaving that for now. So this is the main floor of the house now that we've made those changes. So that front wall came back in two feet, but then we pushed that out two feet to the side. We've got nice spacing on those windows. Now we need to go out here real quick. Um, so as you can see, we need to adjust our roofs to match those little changes. So pretty straightforward. Um, up here, this gable, we're just going to shorten by two feet. This little roof overhang for the porch, we're just going to shorten by two feet. And then we're just going to add a little shed roof section similar to what's on top of the garage here on this new little side section, since we did not extend the upstairs when we extended the downstairs. So we'll go up. Um, I always keep my roofs on the attic level. So we'll go up here to the attic level. And instead of three foot six, that needs to be one foot six. Drag and click. And then this one, same deal. So now if we go back and look at the 3D, that's what that looks like. Um, but I don't like, so when I shortened this one, it got the baseline mixed up. So we actually want to drop the baseline. So that brings it back down to where it should be. So there is the front of the house. And then we just need to add this little shed roof section over here. So for that, we go down to the level that we're on. I'm going to turn on my reference display for the floor above. And that's those red lines you see. And I'll click like that. And then because this is a shed roof section, I don't need it to be the full eight inch pitch. I'm going to do a three pitch sure my overhang at the end is correct. Same on this end. And then if we look at that in 3D, that matches up. Now we just need to double check our color. Make sure that our soffit, fascia, and overhang are the right color. Okay. So now from the front, that's what that looks like. So that has kind of that cute little detail on the side, which is nice, which actually 
brings us to um hang on one sec we want to do a little mock-up so we wanted to play with doing horizontal siding on this lower part and just having the vertical siding on the upper half of those walls with like a little black decorative edge band there anyway so this is what the client had sent me as a mock-up so let's go ahead and do that um and i'm thinking we're going to match this where that roof line is so we'll go ahead we're going to use the turn off the that i'm going to lift my roof up to the attic level again And then I'm going to use my 3D solid tool to come out here. I'm just going to drag a rectangle, make it about an inch thick, just so, it, well, we'll make it an inch and a half. So it just sticks past the existing siding. And we want it to be about six inches tall. So let's look at that in 3D. And that's pretty close to where we want it. Um, I actually want it to line up with this roof plane so i'm going to drop it a couple inches and sometimes it gets a little picky because it don't it doesn't want to go down below a floor level so i'm going to drop it to let's try negative six that works we're going to drag this out and actually i want to go down one more there we go and we'll make this eight inches tall to match Kind of that edge piece on the roof come on to this end okay i think that looks good and then match our color so we've got that which is nice and then we want to use this horizontal siding on the lower half of that wall And that includes here, 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 and there. Okay. So we're pretty close. I'm not, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, that, that little roof makes sense. But the way this is lining up isn't quite looking right to me. I'm not quite sure why, but if we make it wider, that might be too much. So let's, let's just see what that looks like. Come down to here, bring it over. What do we think of that? That's actually not so bad. Um, and then we just need to adjust this super quick so that we don't have this little wonky corner sticking up. We'll break that and drag that down. So there, and then I'm actually going to drag this back here to wrap the corner because I think that part looks a little funny too. So we need to zoom in here. Okay, so first we pull that out. And we break here and wrap the corner. And then we make sure that our thickness is the one inch. So if we go back to the 3D, there that connects, that wraps. That looks nice and uniform. And then I almost wonder if we should do the same thing right there, just so it's consistent all the way around. So let's actually, yeah, let's actually just do that. Um, I'm going to click on this, drag it on over, and we're essentially just going to continue this around the corner. So again, we're doing our one inch thickness. And this part here, you're not going to see, but then when it gets to the corner, that's where you're going to see this again. So we pull this on out. line that up get our one inch thickness and drag this to the corner which now voila connects that 
And then the only other thing we want to do here is change that finish just because then that's consistent all the way around. So I think that ends up looking really nice. It's a clean look. Got some consistency it breaks up the front i like that um yeah very cool so just a really nice simple black and white color scheme i think this works really well and then i made those windows taller over here to really draw the eye up okay yeah so I think this is working perfect. So that was the stuff that we need to do on the exterior. Let me check my list here. We shrunk the front and back. We added the two feet. We got rid of the visible beams on the main floor. We're mocking up the siding on the front. All that's left is up here on the second floor. Um, we've got just a couple changes to make with this master suite. So we had the master bedroom. And it had sort of a his and hers closet set up. We had one closet that was accessible in the bathroom and the other closet that was accessible from the bedroom. So they've decided a couple things. Um, first of all, this closet here from the office doesn't need to be near as big. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna change this to a pocket door. Make sure that goes the other direction. And we're actually gonna shrink this room or shrink this closet. To be just sort of your basic two foot deep standard hanging closet so throw some dimension lines in here real quick um, closets need to be two foot one deep to fit a hanging rod and then we're going to open this up like that and so now this closet is all of the closets we're actually going to get rid of this one over here in the bathroom this becomes the entire closet so i'm going to get my tool over here start slapping down hanging rod this I mean, you're going to have some storage ways. I think, here, right, let's do this. Okay, so we'll stretch that. Um, the initial version of these when it first goes down is um, two foot chunks, because that's kind of your standard default for modular units. And then you can always stretch them to fit the corners as needed. Um, now I was, I can put one here. So hang on. There we go. And we'll stretch and drag that. No, we won't. Um, and then in combination with the rod and shelf combination, there's not enough space to do rod shelf on both sides of this nook because you would not have enough space to walk. But we can do just 12 inch deep shelving here and then you still have space to get to the hanging garment area. Um, and then have say a wall for like shoe shelves or something. So we'll drag that. Um, so this is just kind of basically giving the client an idea of how much linear space of storage they have. And then they'll go to their local cabinet vendor, closet vendor, and pick out the exact modular system that they want in here. Um, and so I'm thinking actually we're going to shrink this closet even just a little more. Get that door kind of centered on there. There we 
we go. And we'll shorten that a little bit. There we go. So that is now our master closet all in one. It's just the one door coming off. So then over here, what we decided to do, laundry room's going to stay the same. The toilet and all of this is going to stay the same. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, they decided that they did, in fact, want a tub, which originally they did not. So we're going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to use my shower wall tool. Um, so this is a half tile, half glass wall. The bottom half is tiled up to about three and a half, four feet. And then the top half is glass. We'll copy and paste our shower door. Hinge this the other direction. Copy over our shower pan. Okay, so this wall needs to move out just a little bit. So we've got a three foot shower pan. And then originally this was a 66 by 36 shower because of um, the new positioning. This is now the full width of the room. So now it is, let me double check my measurements here. Eh, honestly, I'm going to do this. You want a shower head on this end. Shower head on this end. Um, and I'm actually going to, oops, gonna label this room shower. So change it to bath and then type in. And that way it'll auto give us those dimensions. And then I'm going to copy over my note about the niche. Although actually we don't need to do the niche in the lower wall. Um, when I had it on an exterior wall, the niche could only have gone on this little wall here. But now that it's on an interior wall, we can do a niche anywhere along this side and it'll be fine. So we don't need that note anymore. Take that out. We're going to delete all this. Okay. Then we're taking the vanity. Flippy flip flip. Moving it over to this wall. And because we're moving it to that wall, we actually have a little bit more space. So I'm actually going to move it um, a couple things. First, I'm going to move it to this end. Get myself that one inch buffer for the cabinetry. And then I'm going to, let's see, that's only a 12 inch cabinet. So I'm going to scoot this over. Give myself that. So I have a full six foot vanity here. We'll adjust the mirror. And then we're going to add in a linen cabinet down here on this end. Scooch the door over a bit, change the hinge direction. Um, I'm going to label this as linen because sometimes people don't know what that change in color means. So I'm just going to point out that that is a full head linen ca closet cabinet. We got the six foot vanity. Okay. And then we need a bathtub. And we'll put that here. Okay, rotate that around. So we've got enough clearance for this door swing, which is awesome. So I'm actually going to show that a little bit more. And then we've got enough space here now that we've done this change. I'm going to move this door over just a little bit because we don't need it quite as snug up against that vanity so that we're not running into someone when we open that door. I'm also going to add a ledge here behind the tub. 
So we have kind of a tiled wall back there, but we also, when we have these big tubs, you still want to have your soap bottles and everything close by. And so a feature that I've been getting asked for a lot lately is these um, tiled ledges that go up behind the tub as a place to rest that. And then I will also continue that at the same height as a tiled wainscot. And I'll extend this over to the door frame. So if we look at this in 3D, that is what that looks like. Um, and we're going to copy this tile onto the wall and onto that. And then we're going to go into the shower and do the same thing. Oops. And that's the one thing with these glass doors, you can't see them sometimes when you're right up on them. So you end up accidentally painting them. But we're going to continue that tile around. Okay. So if we look in the mirror, that's what our vanity area looks like. We just need to switch the hinges on this linen cabinet. left so there we've got our full height linen cabinet we've got mirror vanity that wall is still tiled because that was the shower before so i'm actually going to undo that uh, if i were to just paint that one it would just paint over the tile pattern you'd still be able to see that it was tiled at one point so I have to go back and actually change that back to just a painted finish okay so that is correct and then we'll turn around and I actually want this little snippet of this wall to be tiled as well so now we've got that whole section that's been tiled so you can have your soap and shampoo bottles up there and not have to worry about it being wet and it just creates a really nice look and although you can't see it, that is a glass wall with a glass door. And that is our toilet enclosure. And this is the master bedroom. So there's the door out into the hallway, the door into the closet. And then we're in the hallway. Got this nice staircase open. Yay! And then the only thing we have left to do here, it looks like, is go down to the main floor and just double check we get these built-ins put back in because I deleted half of those when I moved the wall. Okay. And then I'm going to double check that my windows are that's one foot from the corner. I feel like that needs to be over just a little bit. So let's make that two foot from the corner. And then let's move this whole one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's centered between the two windows. Which means. Okay, so I'm going to move that over. And then we're going to stretch that and stretch that. So now that's nice and centered, symmetrical. I think that's going to work really nice. So you've got the option for the TV here, or if you ever wanted to not do the tv above the fireplace you could shift that whole thing and you'd have space in between these two front windows you could do the tv on that wall if you preferred but this is our space um i do like this little drop zone here next to the garage where you come in which is awesome okay and then let me just real quick double check with all the changes you made up here that we 
adjusted our basement, which I don't think we did. So F9. Okay, we did bring in our front wall, but we didn't bring out our side wall. Okay. So that matches up. So the basement for now is just going to be unfinished. So we're going to label this as basement. Um, and I don't know for sure if they'll finish the bath right away, but we did want to at least mark it out. Um, it's going to be rough plumbed. These are the locations. And then in the future, if they want to change that, they can. But at least we have something. Unfinished basement, walk out with the slider, and then there's storage below the stairs. Okay. So one last look at the outside, make sure we got everything lined up. Okay. And the roof matches up all the way around. We got our colors looking the way we want. That front porch is a little shallow, but it still looks good. It still gives the front that detail it needs. And then we did the mock-up showing a wide edge band and the mix of the vertical and horizontal siding. So yay, we are done with that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then what I'm going to send over to my client are screenshots of what we've got here. And I'm trying to remember, I had, did I label that as terrain? I'm trying to remember. Aha, there we go. So then this right here. Oh, we want to do. Hold on. Okay. So if we have that all the way up, then the stairs don't have anywhere to go. So let's lower that height a little bit. There we go. And we probably should do the same thing right here, just so it's kind of consistent across the front. Okay, so we've got that, and then we want to adjust this in. So that roughly is what that's going to look like. That doesn't look... Hold on a sec. Okay, no, there are two steps difference between the garage door and the... Okay, that's what we needed. We needed that elevation change of 21 inches there between the floor of the garage and the floor of the house, and we've got that. And then they will, in the once they figure out the exact grade of this lot in the back, they'll put a deck on here. But I don't have to worry about designing that part right now. And then we've got the walkout basement. So I think that actually meets everything we needed so, let me just slide this because we there we go there we go that actually worked really well for drawing out that gray because i'm not good with using the terrain tools yet so i just kind of made my own using solids but okay so this is what the client wanted to see and now I will just take a couple screenshots to show them. Okay, and hang on one second. all these screenshots from before okay cool we got that so now we can save this and not get confused except i think i just saved that in the wrong folder Oops. oh well okay save it um looking at it from this side Okay. Um, the back doesn't really matter. Uh, we do want to get a quick shot of the floor plan.
And I'm going to make a quick little note of the square foot because we went up to 903 on the main floor. Hold on. Post its for everything. Okay. So main. And upstairs is 1217. Dimension lines into where they're visible. There we go. Okay, so we get a screenshot of this. Go up a floor, screenshot of this. And then, like I said, the master bath is kind of the big one that we changed. So I'm going to show this. I'm actually going to show it from back here. I think that looks really cool. So we are in the shower here. And we'll come over to this side. And show this. Okay, and then the last thing is down on the main floor. I'm just going to show coming in the front door. And I want to stand back here in the corner and show what this looks like from back here. And this part didn't change significantly. It just kind of did the two foot squish in, two foot bump out. So that part's pretty similar to what we had before. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I need to show it from this angle because we really didn't change anything here. All right, so that is the plan I was working on and getting all those changes made. So that's kind of what it's like to, you know, get those red line requests back from a client, go in, modify the plan and send it on back. So hopefully this should be the version that they end up building. At this point, then their builder will put numbers to it and then they'll say, go ahead. And then I will create the construction documents, which will um, be the full layout set. So this is just kind of the conceptual design. All the measurements are right, but it's not sent to them in a scaled format. When they're ready for that, then we'll do the scaled format. That'll have all of the uh, interior and exterior elevations. Everything the city's going to look at for permit will be on that set of plans. But that is once they've approved this initial set. So I think we are good for today. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any other questions about design, if you want to learn more about custom home plans or anything, love to communicate, love to chat with you. So feel free to chat, comment. Um, Tell me what you want to know, and I will hopefully answer that. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.